Senator from South Carolina. Thank you, Madam President, for the opportunity to talk about something really important to all Americans, but specifically important to Americans from the Deep South who happen to look like me. As I listen to the President talk about the importance of stopping what he characterized as Jim Crow 2.0, I felt frustration and irritation rising in my souls. As I keep hearing the references to Jim Crow, I ask myself how many Americans understand what Jim Crow was. I am so thankful, thankful that we are not living in those days. But just for those who don't appreciate the Jim Crow that was, it was a time when my grandfather, born in 1921, would have experienced that if he was still alive. He could tell the stories of the Jim Crow South and the Jim Crow era, an era where in order for a black person to vote, you had to pass a literacy test. Now, if you could read at that point, it would not just be a test on whether or not you could read, it would be a test on do you know who your governor was 20 years before you were getting ready to vote. It would include the threat of being lynched, literally killed because those in power wanted to stop black folks from realizing and fully participating in the greatest nation on earth and exercising what I believe is a fundamental responsibility and right of Americans, the right to vote. It would include beatings and the power of intimidation, the loss of your job if you dared to show up to vote. And so when I hear my president and your president, our president of these United States just a little while ago, a week or so ago, talk about Jim Crow 2.0 and using as the poster child of this new Jim Crow South being the Georgia voting law, I rushed to read the law one more time so that I could understand what in the world is he talking about now. Uh, I'm here this morning, this afternoon, because I had a conversation with the South Carolina NAACP about two hours ago. And they encouraged me to come to the floor and make my comments as public as possible so that people understand what I have read in the Georgia law and compare it to the Jim Crow South. So what we know about the Georgia law, and I've read the law, what we know about the Georgia law is the controversy that the president spoke about and that we heard members of Congress speak about over the weekend is it is illegal to get water while waiting to vote. Now that claim has been proven false. It is not illegal to get water while waiting in line. That is false. The only time you can't get water while waiting in line to vote, according to the Georgia law, is if there's a partisan, someone campaigning for someone, campaigning for someone, you can't bring them water. But if you are an election worker or a relative, you can of course bring the person Water. So that was completely false. But if that is the threshold of the new Jim Crow era, it looks nothing like the past. However, even that is false. Uh, what else is in that Georgia law that is uh, supposedly the poster child of voter suppression? It allows for early voting to include now the souls to the polls where you have Sundays where you can vote early. As a matter of fact, 17 days of early voting, more early voting than the president's own home state or New York. It allows for mail-in ballots without an excuse. The same thing that was turned down by the voters in New York. No excuse on demand. Mail-in ballots is now the law in Georgia. New drop boxes. That pre-pandemic, there was, it was not legal to have a drop box in Georgia. Now it is legal to have a drop box in Georgia. And voter ID, supported by at least 60% of African Americans, 60% of Hispanics, 60% or more of the majority population. After going through point by point and realizing in South Carolina the minority turnout was stronger 
than the overall turnout in South Carolina. And two of the three African-American senators in the United States Senate today, two of us, represent those southern states. It's hard to deny progress when two out of three come from the southern states that people say are the places where African-American African -American votes are being suppressed. Not to mention the fact that 2020 was a banner year for minority participation in the greatest nation on earth from a voting perspective. And that is, my friends, good news. The Democrats' proposal would allow for the supporters of Bernie Sanders and their tax dollars to go into my reelection account. I oppose that. It would undermine voter ID laws across our country. I oppose that. It puts unaccountable bureaucrats in charge of our elections. Americans oppose that. And walking in on the day of the election, registering to vote without any verification is something I, too, oppose. And so. Madam President, when I think about the important issue of voting and when I think about the issue of voter, voter suppression, it lands on my front porch. Because as a guy who has voted in the Deep South all my life, as a person who was born in 1965 with a mama who understands racism, discrimination, and separate and not equal, the grandfather who I took to vote and helped him cast his vote because he was unable to read. To have a conversation in a narrative that is blatantly false is offensive, not just to me or Southern Americans, but offensive to millions of Americans who fought, bled, and died for the right to vote. So if we're going to have an honest conversation about the right to vote, let's engage in that based on the facts of the laws that are being passed, not the rhetoric surrounding those laws, where it looks like power is more important than people. I'll close with this. The Civil War of this nation started in my hometown. One of the most powerful and popular senators in the history of America was Strom Thurmond. 2010, when I ran for Congress, I ran for Congress in the place where the Civil War started. And I ran for Congress in a Republican primary against the son of Strom Thurmond. I won that race, not merely because of who I am, but because of who we have become as a nation. The evolution of the hearts of America and the hearts of Southerners could not be more clear on a day when the son of a single mother, mired in poverty, runs against the son one of the most famous senators in the history of the country and comes out victorious. I would love for us to have a conversation about what we're doing for Americans as opposed to this negative false narrative of what is happening to America. Thank you, Madam President.